Hello and welcome to Mass with Mary, Queen of the Apostles Parish in Salem, Massachusetts. My name is Margot Morin. I'm your pastoral associate and I'm very glad to greet you today. We know that you have a million things to do and so many choices of ways to pray today and parishes to worship with. And so we thank you for choosing us to spend your time in prayer with our pastor, Father Bob Murray will be presiding. Behind the camera is Stephen Antonio, our Director of Family Engagement. And the music is coordinated uh, for you, for us, by Scott Ness. Before every Mass here at Mary Queen of the Apostles, we invite people to, everyone, to choose a prayer partner, someone to whom they will dedicate their prayer time. And this week, particularly a chaotic week, we want to give you a little time in the midst of chaos for a moment of peace. So we offer this prayer, this video of prayer that you can use to help you get out of the chaos into a peaceful place and begin to pray for your prayer partner. Enjoy. have come to the seashore, 
neither searching for the rich nor the wise, desiring only that I should follow. upon me, gently smiling, you have spoken my name, all I long for I have found by the water, at your side I will seek other shores. My goods, my possessions, in my boat you find no power, no wealth. Will you accept then my nets and labor? Gently smiling, you have spoken my name. All I longed for, I have found by the water. At your side, I will seek other shores. Welcome. As we gather to celebrate the third Sunday of Ordinary Time, I'm Father Bob Murray, the pastor here at Mary Queen of the Apostles Parish in Salem, Massachusetts. We're here today in one of our beautiful churches, Immaculate Conception uh, Church. Why don't we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My sisters and brothers gathering together as God's people, and to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let's first call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for his pardon and strength to be full of gentleness and compassion. We've begun by using the confidier now for, this, for these Sundays of ordinary time. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault in my thoughts, in, what, in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, so that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever, amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah saying, set out for the great city of Nineveh and announce to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's bidding. Now, Nineveh was an enormously large city it took three days to get through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk, announcing, 40 days more and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, 
they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the time is running out. From now on, let those having wives act as not having them, those weeping as not weeping, those rejoicing as not rejoicing, those buying as not owning, those using the world as not using it fully. For the world in its present form is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Then they abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked along a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in a boat, mending their nets. Then he called them. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat, along with the hired men, and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. My father was famous for uh, getting lost and uh, for having to stop and ask for directions. Sometimes my mother would be laughing at him. Other times she would be so furious with him that, uh, that there'd be some awesome silence in the front seat of the car. But what, my, what always came to pass was that we would get uh, straightened out and we would find ourselves going to the right place, whether it was uh, to someone's home that he thought he knew where they lived 
or to some new store we were going to look at for, to buy things. And whatever the, whatever the trip was all about, um, my father would eventually get the whole thing straightened out. He would uh, find a, a new direction or find the right direction and start heading that way. And I think in many ways the, the readings, both particularly in the uh, first reading and the second reading, uh, is a little bit about finding a new direction. And the direction, of course, is a result, uh, needing the new direction is a result of getting lost. And Jonah, of course, is a, one of the great stories of the Old Testament. Jonah, who was in many ways the same, same, doing the same thing, going the opposite way. He was resisting becoming a prophet. He was swallowed by a whale and spit up on the shore of Nineveh and began to do his work. What's so wonderful about Jonah and about the response of the people is that once they heard the story that they needed to repent, they immediately did. They didn't wait. They didn't say, well, I'm going to give up chocolate for 40 days and then I'm going to be good. Um, they immediately began to change the course of their lives, the, the action, the behaviors of their life in order to become uh, more in line with what God had invited them to, to do at the very beginning of his relationship with them. In many ways, it is the same way with Jesus. After years of uh, prophets coming and telling the message, and after uh, years of watching, as we see in the Old Testament, the ebb and flow of uh, the people of God uh, turning away from God and then him uh, inviting them back sometimes in, in, in the most loving and gracious and gentle of ways, once he got their attention, um, he would uh, in turn help them to repent, which is in a word to change the direction of who they are and where they were going. And that's essentially what Jesus says to each one of us as he begins the, the proclamation of the good news and what we need to hear all the time. The truth is, there's always work for us to do within our own spiritual lives, within our own uh, persons. We sometimes are people who, despite our best efforts, uh, fail to do what, what we ought to do as far as loving God and loving our neighbors, which is uh, the essential part of the, the essential message of the entire gospel. And so Jesus invites us from the very beginning to let us know that this is what God is, wants us to be about, about changing our behavior that might make it, that might make us simply more people who, who, who grow in holiness by again, loving God and by loving our neighbors and working that out in a very concrete way. In many ways, it's not just about uh, our faith, certainly as Christians, it's cer certainly not about only going to church or only saying our prayers. It's about uh, loving God and loving our neighbors. And that means putting into action uh, the things that we believe. A person who, I forget the name of the person, but I'm quoting, who says that actually, if you're going to be a Christian, you need to add things on to your life, not so much subtract them. Some things do need to be subtracted, but for the most part, service, adding on to more service in your life is really the mark of Christianity. And that's where Andrew and Peter and uh, all those who are called come into play in today's gospel. And what's so marvelous about this particular moment is the, the, radical, uh, the radical response of all of these uh, men who most likely knew Jesus in some way. They knew him from around the neighborhood, from around uh, the city uh, where, he, where he was and around the Sea of Galilee. And these, uh, they most likely had heard him speak a little bit. But now in this very public beginning, uh, Jesus calls out to these people and calls them to, to join him. And again, this is a continuation of last week's gospel in which uh, Jesus looks into a person's life, a person who they are, and recognizes what their gifts and skills are, but also what those gifts and skills might become when grace is put on top of them. And eventually we know that Peter will become the, the first pope, the first leader of the church, the first of the disciples, the rock upon which Jesus will build his whole church. Peter's not a perfect person. He's not a uh, highly trained theologian. He's a, a person who God's in, in whom Jesus sees goodness and potential and then draws that out of him slowly as he continues to be in relationship with him. And that's a very good pattern for ourselves also, that once we get into relationship with Jesus, if we really allow ourselves to continue to repent and continue to follow him, he will uh, lead us into uh, 
a deeper relationship or lead us into even a, a deeper expression of living out our faith of our love of God and our love of neighbor. That's our re rep ongoing repentance. The same thing with uh, whom I admire quite a bit actually. In, in this past week in a, one of the beta groups, we had a discussion about what's the part that is most striking to you in this gospel. For me, it is the part where uh, Andrew, uh, it just, Jam excuse me, where James and John left their father in the boat and went off to follow Jesus. Uh, how, uh, how sudden and, and uh, precise that decision was. I'm going, I'm leaving everything behind. In many ways, that's part of, the, again, the call of Christianity, that once we have our conversion, uh, th the very first part of it is to simply make a, uh, a, c a concentrated decision, a con a, an absolute decision that this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to live as a Christian. And uh, if it means putting, leaving some things behind, then so be it. That's what I, that's what I want to do in, in following Jesus Christ. It's a radical decision. And <clears throat> we're invited to be, uh, to, to, we're invited to imitate uh, those disciples and to, to just decide today that we're going to follow Jesus as fully and as completely as we can, even leaving behind the things that, uh, that, we, that we need to in order to follow him as freely as we can. The nets, I think, are a wonderful uh, metaphor. They leave behind that, uh, the, the, that detailed work, but also the nets that might have captured their whole lives as fishermen and become a different type of uh, fisher out in the world, drawing people to, to God through Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the, the challenge for all of us. In many ways, we are people who uh, can never just come to church and, uh, and just simply, accept, uh, simply assume that because we've come to church that we're fulfilling our obligation in, in our Christian discipleship. We have all means, of, uh, all manners of a continuous development that we use, whether it's adult formation, it's our, our uh, alpha groups, our beta groups, our ongoing uh, education, all the different service opportunities that we have here at Mary Queen of the Apostles Parish. All of those are ways that we are inviting everybody all the time to radically leave behind something so that we might go out towards Jesus and serve him and others. This week also, we of course celebrated and watched as our new president was inaugurated and so made his pledge to, uh, to watch over us, to, to lead us as a nation. Let's pray for uh, President now Biden that he will continue to uh, be a, a president who serves uh, not only the, the Lord, but also serves uh, the people of this country and the people all over the world by what he says and do, does. We need to pray for him and to pray for all those who are supporting him and helping him. And so as we continue to pray the rest of the Mass, so we have our task for us, uh, set out to us, to ask the Lord to give us the desire for repentance, to follow a new path, and that that path might be the path of Jesus Christ as active disciples, bringing the message of God everywhere we go, to, every, to, to whom everyone we meet. And God bless you in this week. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. To God, the source of life and author of holiness, we turn in prayer. For all preachers of the gospel, that they may preach not with human eloquence, but with the power of their example, and their proclamation of the cross and resurrection of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the healing of our nation, that God will heal the divisiveness and mistrust that divides us and open a new path of dialogue, cooperation, and advancement of the common good, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who do not recognize the sacredness of life, that they will experience a conversion of mind and heart, and that the cries of all the most vulnerable members of society will be heard and responded to, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are passing through a time of sickness, impoverishment, or grief, that they will experience divine healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts and for the needs of our prayer partners. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they may dwell in the Lord's house forever, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are fixed on you. Help us to focus on your loving care and share it with everyone we meet this week. Hear our prayers, we ask, and grant them through Christ our Lord. During normal times, we'd be taking up a collection during the Mass, receiving your offertory gifts, which make everything we do here possible. And of course, even though we aren't always gathered together in person, your donations are relied upon and needed to keep our parish going and working and serving. So we thank you for your generous gifts and your support prayerfully and financially. You can give really easily on our webpage, mqoa.org slash donate. And uh, of course, you, if you have envelopes, you can always pop those in the mail or drop them by in our secure mailbox. Um, and if you have any questions about giving, please get in, in touch with us. We'll make it easy for you and let you know how much we appreciate your generosity. Thank you. Lord God, we call out to you as you call out to us with our needs. We ask you now to listen to all of the prayers that we offer to you this day and allow them according to your will and our need. We make all of our prayer through Christ our Lord. Would you pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim, holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are holy indeed, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke the bread, said the blessing, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. James and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us safely offer to one another some sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Pour in us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you, May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Our Mass is ended.
Thanks be to God. Thank you, folks, and stay safe during this week. Take, oh, take me as I am. Summon out what I shall be. Set your seal upon my heart and live in me. Take, oh, take me as I am. Summon what I shall be. Set your seal upon my heart and live in me. Take hold, take me as I am. Summon out what I shall be. Set your seal upon my heart and live in me.